some some opened up better than others for sure. And sometimes it's just it's just age and memory are are, are factors that that come into play. But for the most part, uh, the men were were very um, willing to talk and eager to talk. And I think I think the stories had been bottled for for so long. And uh, and just even even lately, there's there's sort of a new a new um, emphasis on it, it, it. It's okay to talk for for combat veterans. It, it's okay to tell your stories. People do want to hear them. They do want to listen. Uh, you know, I think of, of Clancy uh, Lyle, one of the men, Clancy Lyle, and uh, he when he jumped, he uh, he uh, he jumped in uh, near uh, Saint Mary Glace. And uh, Clancy was the type of man who would, he would shoot to, to wound uh, if he could. He, he would not shoot to kill. So one day he's, uh, he's fighting uh, in, in Normandy and, and this German pops out across the street. And Clancy has a, has a clean shot on him. He, he, can, he can take him out. But he, uh, he, he chooses to shoot him in the leg instead and just, just to take him out of the battle. And as the story progresses, a few days later, uh, Clancy is fighting in in Carentan, and uh, and an amazing story. He's 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 running around this corner in the city. It's a blind corner, and as he runs around the corner, he runs straight into this into this outstretched bayonet that this enemy soldier is holding, and so the the weapon goes and sticks fast in Clancy's gut. Fortunately for Clancy's sake, he's able to pull up his rifle. Uh, sooner than the other man and get a shot off. And Clancy, when he's telling the story, his sense of humor comes into play, kind of a dark sense of humor, but he says, well, I wasn't shooting to wound just then. I, I had the rare opportunity to speak with Shifty Powers uh, before he passed, and we, we interviewed, uh, oh, maybe three, four times to get the stories for the book. And then Shifty, being just this amazing gentleman that he was, uh, he, he would phone me every every so often after that. We probably talked half a dozen more times after that, and he would call me up and we'd just kind of, you know, shoot the breeze. And he'd tell me about uh, what he was doing at home and about the weather and things like that. And tw uh, Shifty, he had cancer at the end, and, and um, he had good days and bad days, in his words. And so when, when he'd call, I'd say, well, you know, Shifty, what, what kind of day are you having today? And he's, oh, I'm having a good day, I'm having a bad day. I said, uh, you know, Shifty, tell me, Tell me about a good day for you. What does a good day look like? And he said, well, you know, the thing I just, I just love to do is I, I love to st uh, stand on, on my front porch. I love to shoot rifles. He, he had an M1 rifle that, that uh, some guys had given him, and it, he would just, you know, just stand on his front porch and shoot these guns, just target practice. And, yeah, he lived in a re remote area, and he could, he could do that. I said, so Shifty, what, you know, tell me, what does a, what, what a bad day look like for you? And he said, well, you know, if, if I'm having a hard day, I, I pretty much just sit in my, in my recliner and, and uh, you know, I, I, I like to listen to books on tape. And I said, well, you know, wh what are some of your favorite books? And he said, well, uh, I like Westerns. I, I really like, like Louis L'Amour. And, well, he said, I, I like the Bible. And I thought, you know, that, that's a pretty good image of a man, a man who uh, he enjoys uh, uh, shooting guns off his porch and listening to the Bible. <laughs> I found that the children have told me that, uh, oh, I wish my father had been featured more. The men themselves are a pretty, pretty courageous and, and pretty humble lot when it comes to uh, themselves. They more, they more express how they wish other units could have been highlighted. They're, they're the, the, the quickest to recognize that, yes, they were an elite fighting force, an elite uh, group of, of soldiers. At the same time, they weren't the only one and uh, it, it, it took a real uh, team effort to get the job done, and, and they want the, the recognition spread to other, to other troops. One of the uh, amazing compliments that an author could have ever received was given to me by um, one of the wives of the Easy Company men, and uh, just after the book came out, she phoned me up and she said, you know, Marcus, she said, my husband was really going downhill, and he had really, he had really lost his spark, and he was really just, just hanging on. And she said, and then this book came out, and she said, and he's really got a new purpose. He's just, his spark came back. And, and the, the idea that, that maybe 
telling these stories could prolong this man's life, I think that's just a, an amazing privilege to be part of.